People are so funny when they come to me, chef, I'm eating here all day. He's like, how am I losing weight? I, I've been eating all day. I'm so full. I'm like, well, right. and then in a week, he's like, I lost five pounds. How did that happen? <laughs> I, I've never done that before without being hungry. So, chef, one of the things that I notice when I go to the grocery store, because I do these grocery store scavenger hunts with our guests, and we, you know, scavenger the grocery store and pick products that are pretty and approved. Yeah, yeah. And, um, the guests always geared towards and ask me the question about energy bars. Everybody wants to eat energy bars. Guess what? They are touted to be healthy, but most times they're not. And one of the things that we have to realize about energy bars is that they're not whole foods. They use pro um, protein isolates, like soy protein isolates and things like that. And the body is really not designed to process the processed food. So yes, I know they're convenient, they taste good, they're seemingly healthy, but they're very calorically dense because they're very dry. Yep. And how long does it actually take you to eat an energy bar? Yeah, I mean- How many minutes? A minute, two minutes? Yeah. And I'm... then it's gone, right? And then when it's gone, guess what? You're still hungry because it takes about 20 minutes for your belly, your mind, your brain and your belly to have a connection that you're actually satisfied. So one of the things I like to tell the guests is, listen, if you eat energy bars and when you're finished, you still want to eat more food, then that's, that's to show you that it, it's not very satisfying because it's very, very dry. Whereas yeah. if you ate something like oatmeal, right, that, that'll take you a little bit longer time. It'll fill the belly and the, be the mind, the brain and the belly will connect and say, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell people if you're gonna, you know, have something like an energy bar, there's better ideas as opposed to like a grab and go energy bar. Make your own little grab and go burger type of things, right? Like you can make like a broccoli quinoa burger. Quinoa has a lot of protein in it, right? Naturally, Absolutely. make a make a bean patty, like a split pea patty. You're making and, and add things like rosemary, add things like oregano and fresh thyme. You know, add different spices. You know, there's a black bean burger that we serve here with a Southwest Chipotle seasoning on there. There's mm -hmm. lots of things that you can do that you can kind of toasty. You know, make these in big batches portion them out on a sheet tray with parchment paper, and, and then freeze them. And once they're frozen, then you bag them up. And you got, you got patties of whatever. There you have it. There's your energy, energy bar. You know what I mean? And, and, and you can put that in a wrap. You can put that on a little, in a little burger bun. Or just have it just like that, honestly. And they're nice and okay. crunchy when you bake them in the oven for like 15 minutes or so. Yeah. I got to tell you that new shiitake, was it shiitake, shiitake sesame, sesame burger, burger yeah. was... Out of right. this world. Yeah. So um, well, I'm glad you like that. It. Yeah. I'm going to bring that into my wheelhouse at home. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different things you can try out. I mean, we, our standard veggie burger is such a simple thing to make, but just changing the spices, changing the vegetables in there, you know, those are all things you can kind of, you know, to do to tweak it and adding grains into your into your things like, like the quinoa or, or wheat berries or adding, uh, you know, brown rice even, or, and adding things like, the, like lentils, you know, also. There's so many things you can add to like a burger. Uh, patty that you know mm -hmm. even if you're actually using actual meat in there you try to make a four ounce patty but only be like one or two ounces of actual right meat, and then add know? in the vegetable exactly wonderful exactly. hack yeah so you might need a little bit of like egg beaters or, or, or breadcrumbs just to bind it together um, but that's just one little thing that you can really kind of have on hand as opposed to having these like grab-and-go energy bars have grab-and-go type of different burgers you know oh, so I love it kind of what variety. a great idea what a yeah, great well, idea got lots of good ideas here. yes you do chef so yogurts Yogurts. Okay. Have you ever, well, obviously I know you've been to the grocery store, chef. And when you go to the grocery store, how many yogurts do you see there? A ton. It's, it's a wall like, of yogurt. It's an entire wall of yogurt. So my advice to you is go with the word unsweet or plain. Okay. When you see something that says fruit on the bottom, that is not fruit on the bottom. That is 100% sugar. So a lot of times- Sugar on the bottom. <laughs> it's sugar on the bottom. It's not fruit on the bottom. So I always suggest to all of my clients that if you want to eat yogurt, it's a great idea to go fat-free, go Greek and go plain. Yep. And then we can jazz it up with all the little things that you do, like fruits and cinnamon and what else? What else? A little so, zest. I mean, you know, in the morning, in our fruit buffet in the morning, we have, um, you know, a whole bunch of different fresh fruit, but then we also have our oatmeal topping bar, which you can also use those toppings, which are fruit compotes, um, which is essentially what the fruit at the bottom is. And, you know, we actually put a little dash of apple juice concentrate into there mm. to give it a little pinch of sweetness, but not putting a ton of sugar like, uh, or corn syrup, which what a lot of these companies will do and process the heck out of it, you know? So, you can use frozen cherries, frozen peaches, you know, fresh apples, fresh bananas, and just cook them down for like five minutes and a little bit of their natural juices, uh, berries especially, 
for some things, you need a little bit of water added to it. Just helps them cook down, you know, just a little bit easier, more effectively. But you know, if you're going to do that fruit at the bottom thing, don't look at that like you're having fresh fruit, right? Like I'm sure you're going to say you that. are not. It's just an enhancement to your yogurt, yeah. right? Or to your oatmeal or whatever you want to use. But you know, Absolutely. always add fresh fruit too. You know, to kind of bulk it up a little bit more. And you know, we have a thing like a granola, you know, that we'll use as a, like a, um, you know, we'll kind of give a little more crunch to your yogurt if you wanted to. But it's made with a little, little tiny bit of a, a crispy brown rice cereal. As we'll, opposed we'll, to the we'll, regular granola. Correct, correct, correct. We'll actually put it into the food processor, grind it up, a little dash of maple syrup into it, you know, just kind of let it all stick together, and then bake it in the oven, and it really crisp up. Wow. Even a little bit of panko breadcrumb added to it kind of helps it really just nice and crunchy, and anyway, you can have that for a while. So, so Chef has these really awesome fancy ways to do it, but what I do is I just <laughs> take the yogurt, I plop some fruit in it, and I just load it up with some cinnamon, and I'm good to go. But... Listen, when you want to really impress someone or you're having some sort of little shindig at your house, <laughs> Chef has some really awesome <laughs> ideas. I like that brown rice thing. That's really, really the, the a crispy cool brown rice the cereal crispy is a nice brown one, yeah. rice. It's like a healthy version of Rice Krispies, essentially. So it's it's a good way to go. And, um, you know, even if you want to do things more besides cinnamon, right? Try using, like, nutmeg, allspice, clove, nutmeg. ginger, right? I mean, there's yeah, so many other things. So many. Jazz it up a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah so I mean, citrus no fruit zest. on the bottom, guys. Citrus zest is another one to do, too, right? Citrus. Lemon. Yeah. Yes. The best investment that I had about two years ago is I purchased a zester for like $9.99 on Amazon, and yeah. I'm just zesting everything up, and Zest it really it makes everything kind of pop. For sure. So yogurts are great, but you got to be careful. You got to go plain, right? And um, you got to um, make sure that it doesn't have too much saturated fat in it as well. Yeah. Really important. So snack number three is the dried fruit. Now... A lot of us think that dried fruit is healthy, right? Because it's fruit and it's sweet. So it's kind of like, rather than having candy, I'm going to have dried fruit. Yeah, well, I mean, look, 40 grapes, 40 raisins. I mean, which one's going to give me more fullness in my belly, right? Absolutely. I can, I can eat, you know, maybe not eat 40 raisins, but maybe probably 28 raisins pretty quick and easy and not realize you just ate that many raisins. And you don't gain really the same satiety, right? So when you're drying it out, you lose all the moisture. It's, uh, Absolutely. it's, it, you know. That we really, you know, for certainly, you know, here at Pritik, and I try to push the elbow of you and, and, and our yes, other dietitian do. here. So <laughs> trying to use that little tiny bit of dried fruit on a salad, maybe as a garnish, right? But not using it as a snack. Um, that's where we try to, you know, try to enhance that little bit, you know, kind of little, add a little, little pop of something else to a salad, dried blueberries or dried cherries. But it's a small little a tiny dash. component. It, it adds a nice little something extra, but we're not going to want to have that as a snack, right? You know? Absolutely. So one of the things that I like to tell guests is when you're when you're choosing your foods, you want to try and choose foods that are more watery and more fibrous because they build volume in your belly and they fill you up more. Yeah. So if you think about it, if you picture a bowl of grapes, they're really plump and, and watery and then they shrink up to this little tiny raisin. So a serving of raisins is a quarter of a cup, whereas a serving of grapes could be a whole entire cup. It's yeah. a really, really big difference. But I completely agree with you that using something like dried fruit um, as a, what I call an accessory, like a, <laughs> your earrings or your watch or something like that, that's a great idea. But it shouldn't be the main meal because it's not going to fill you up. It's going to load you up with sugar, going to make that insulin rise really high. And then you're going to want to be eating sugar all darn day long. Yeah. So um, let's go with the whole fruit, guys, and maybe use the dried fruit as a little accessory on your salad or something like that. Correct. correct. Sounds like a plan. And actually, number snack number four is granola. Um, but we kind of had a preview of how we actually can make granola be a little bit healthier because most granolas that you see out there um, have that trifecta in them, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, right? The sugar, salt, and fat. So we got to be really careful with granola. Granola sounds healthy because it has rolled oats in it and it has some nuts and seeds in it. But guess what? It's got a whole lot of sugar in it. And it, a lot of times they put a lot of like maple syrup or something like that. So, mm -hmm. Chef, why don't you give tell us how you do your little Look, granola I mean, hack? I gave a little you know, brief introduction, but you can just simply use like raw oats and put those into the, uh, into the food processor with a little tiny dash of some sort of spices like cinnamon. You know, but a little tiny, you know, a bit of maple syrup kind of helps bind a it together, dash, but a very though, right? small bit. But it helps kind of add that little kind of pastiness the to, the, to where you, when you bake it, it kind of, you know, it, it helps kind of add, you know, add that little bit more sweetness, but a very small amount, you know. So we have a recipe online. You can use like a combination of that, the crispy brown rice cereal, a little bit of panko, 
and it adds a nice little extra crunch to whatever you want to put it on, right? You know, you can use like, um, you know, that we use that as like our cobbler to topping. Yep, yep, um, yep. You know, for when we do those fruit, for those fruit compotes, right? You know, the fruit on the bottom. Don't, 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 don't do it too often, right? But <laughs> those are good to have, right? Because you can make those in big batches and you can keep them in the fridge, you know, whether you want to do a fruit compote that's like peach or, you know, whatever, you know, mango, you know, and, and, and pineapple, you can put those in a container for about a week or so. Uh, but the granola thing is something that you can really kind of also keep for about a week or so in the fridge after you bake it. But the thing is, just don't have it as just like blindly eating it. Add it as you said, as an accessory. I like that. I like that. Uh, yes, accessories are good. And and as you can see, a chef has explained to us that it's really not that hard to recreate something that gives you the crunch and the mouthfeel yeah. that you're looking for, but it's not giving you that sugar, salt, and fat situation. Correct. Correct. I mean, it's easy to buy things out of a bag, but you know, it's always going to be like more processed. And like you said, it's going to have more salt, salt and sugar as well. So. Right. And so the key here, and what we always talk about at Pritikin, is that we plan, because when we plan, we succeed. So one of the things that's a really good idea that Chef keeps mentioning as we're talking about these snacks is that you prepare not just one, but you prepare a lot. And then that way, you have it for the future, and it really doesn't seem like it's a whole lot of work. You just do it one time, and then, and then it's hanging out and ready for you. Right. So when you open up your refrigerator, there it is. Yep. And um, you don't have to go to the grocery store and grab that that box brand. Exactly. So last but not least, we're going to go with the crunchy <laughs> veggie snacks. So who doesn't like a crunch? I sure do love like, you know, that crunchy feel when I'm eating something. So lo and behold, food manufacturers came up with these chips that they call like veggie straws, or they have like sweet potato chips or oh, yeah. quinoa chips and all these kinds of things. And the truth is, they're, they're touted as healthy because they have a little bit of a healthy ingredient. Maybe they have a little bit of quinoa or a little bit of sweet potato, but most of it is very processed and refined. Yeah. And again, it's very dry. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is it's very easy to overeat and continue it. <laughs> so again, I will reinforce that what we really, really want to go for are the whole foods. And if you want to create a crunch feel, guess what? There's this awesome thing called the air fryer. Yeah. Right? Look, I mean, why I tell people this, I mean, if you want to make your own chips, try to use like a whole wheat tortilla chip or a whole wheat tortilla that's low in sodium. There's a brand here called Maria and Ricardo's that we use. Uh, and we'll cut those up in little, you know, squares or diamonds or whatever and, and bake them for about, you know, five minutes or so. And, and an air fryer is not like a brand new revolutionary thing, right? It's just a mini toaster oven or a mini convection oven, right? Right, and, right. And right. I tell people like, you know, just get one that looks more like a toaster oven because you can spread out those chips or those potato skins like we have in front of us mm -hmm. and get that nice crunch that you're looking for on that and, and, and let it cook quick and easy. Um, and, and the benefit of it of a small little air fryer is that they heat up faster. This, that strong fan is more effective in that small little condensed unit as opposed to a big household oven. Correct. But you Agreed. said those, with those veggie chips, a lot of times, it like they look healthy, right? Because it's like, look, it's it's got pictures Quinoa, of it's got kale. pictures of, of, of spinach and kale on the exactly. back, right? And tomatoes, it's, it's spinach powder and tomato it's, paste. It's that pureed. Yeah. It's pureed. It's not. It's not real. Listen, food manufacturers are in it to win it. They're in it to make money, so they will do and say anything to to lure you in. But yeah. we're here to say that um, it's a bit of a trickery, right? So when you're looking for some healthy, crunchy snacks, my recommendation. Uh, would be to use that convection oven or an air fryer. And um, one of the things that I brought to, um, one, we have a little kids program here, right? And so some, every once in a while, I'll be working with a child and um, kids love chips, right? And we, we <laughs> want kids to be able to enjoy food and have good relationships with food. So um, one of the th recipes that always is a winner winner are um, the crunchy kale chips. And so I, I teach the kids how to make them. And all I do is I said like just massage the kale with a little bit of the oil. And so a little bit goes a long way. And then you put some, you know, little spices, not salt on it. Maybe we'll put that everything but the bagel spice or something yeah, like yep. that. And then they stick it in the air fryer and they actually absolutely love it. And it's a really great way to say, hey, you can actually eat vegetables, make them crunchy, taste good. And it really does help um, <coughs> the, the children have, you know, better relationships with food and, want, and not feel restricted. Yeah. The, the children's program is a great, a great feature that we offer here. And, you know, if you have a young child that you want to have come with you here, we actually offer that program where there's a lot of things that you included. It's, it's a one-on-one -on -one with you, but you get a one-on-one -on -one with us per week as well. 
uh, myself or one of my chefs will do a one-on-one -on -one cooking class with them for an hour long. Fun. And we'll prepare things like vegetable quesadillas or pizzas and things that they're like familiar with. And they're like, like hey, kid friendly food. Kid friendly food, you know, maybe like chicken chicken nuggets, but healthier chicken breast nuggets that are going to be flavorful. Show them a good dip or a sauce to pair with these things. I'm like, what? Well, this is actually really good, but it's a healthier way to make this, right? So whether you want to use whole wheat pasta, whether you use a whole wheat tortilla, here's the things that you're going to just make these modifications low fat cheeses and things like that. But, you know, Lots of vegetables we're trying to push to them as well, right? There was a kids program that we offered, and um, there was like three kids in there, and they were all building their own pizzas, and, they, and we had bell pepper. And the kids like, I have to put, you had to put at least two two vegetables on your pizza, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, okay, he puts one slice of bell pepper. <laughs> and one slice of asparagus. And I'm like, still no. I was like, I like a little bit more than that, a little bit more than that. But 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 after you know, when when they're immersing themselves in these things, they really actually they yeah, they, 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 they tend agree. to like it, and it's a lot of times just getting get in, in that mindset. And and the other thing that I, I think is really important with the kids program is that they get involved in the cooking, because one of the things that I realized in working with kids is that. Number one, kids don't like to listen to their mom and dad. So if, <laughs> if mom says, you need to eat more vegetables, you need to eat more fruit, they're like, yeah, whatever. But you know what? Sometimes when you bring it to the table and you show them, you know, and they're actually doing the work and they're making it themselves and then they taste it yep. and they're like, oh my God, that tastes so good. They feel very empowered. And so this further builds this positive relationship with food, which I think is so, so important because I feel like as an adult, we're products of our childhood. Yeah. Right. So if we can build a healthy base when we're children, by the time that we reach the adulthood, we might still have these positive relationships with food. And um, to me, that's everything. Food exactly. relationship. Exactly. I have a seven and eight year old, so they're always trying to help out in the kitchen. And I'm always help, you know, willing to like, hey, get over here, chop some stuff, you know, help yeah. chop it up or you know, not awesome. give them a knife, but kind of help them, you know, you know, guide them along and, and show them what we're doing, you know, because, you know. Unfortunately, my wife was a pastry chef, so she was like the yin to my yang, and like, <laughs> and like she's like, oh look, you know, and I'm like, you know, but she tries modifying a lot of things to make them healthier ways, but right. you know, but that's you know, unfortunately pastries are a whole other animal, and you know, my kids eat a lot of fresh yeah. fruit, you know, and 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 my kid, my son will, you know, take a whole pint of blueberries and just just finish them in, in one sitting, and 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 you know, that's something that I always try to emphasize, always having things like that on hand. Um, just so they can snack on, as opposed to eating gummies and things like that. Eating, eat, 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 in those kind of healthier mindsets. And they're sweet and they're exactly, good. Exactly. And the, and and if you br bring it in a positive light, then then it actually works. Um, I'll just share one quick little story because I I just was like so um, touched last night. Um, I was working really late. I was here till about seven o'clock, and um, I pretty much like to have you know family dinners at least four nights a week at the table with the kids. And my daughter is 17. She just graduated high school. And she's about to go to college. And so one of the things that I felt was really important to her that she knew how to cook a little bit. So when she went to college, she wasn't always getting the Uber Eats and all the crappy <laughs> food. So um, she's, you know, out of school and she has some time. So when I got home, dinner was completely made. All that I had to do was sit at the dinner table. And there was this beautiful meal. It was... Nice. Um, she made some roasted carrots. She made some um, quinoa brown rice. And she had this like chicken dish. Um, and I was just like, I was blown away because, you know, sometimes you, you, you don't realize that like over time, what you say actually matters. But it was just one of those things. And I was like, wow, I did something right. I was super excited. That reinforcement, so, it's it stuck. And, and it, it was awesome. It just awesome. felt so good. I mean, it's, it's very, that Thank sounds you, very Cam. rewarding. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want my kids to cook me a meal now. Like, there you go. Come on, Vinny and Daisy, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you one thing I do at my house is uh, I, my air fryer has like a dehydrator option as well. So I, I'll put tomato slices in there ah. and I'll make my own tomato chips, you know, and, and ah. you know, they're, they're dehydrated or, you know, but it's at least, you know, it's something that kind of, you know, if you want a little healthier snack. I mean, of course, it's not the, the you know, you're better off eating a fresh tomato. Yes, you but are. It's, it's much better than do your own. Um, and, and of course, you can go ahead and dehydrate whatever, you know, because you can dehydrate, you know, bell peppers and, and actually grind those up to a bell pepper powder or a tomato powder and you get a lot of flavor on an omelet, right? And that gives you a lot of flavor, right? Right. So, there's, you know, That's if you so, go, such a great idea. Yeah, just give me a. I love just, it. We're just, we're just throwing stuff All right. Here. So, and that's just kind of churned because um, I'm looking at this dip here. And we know that dips and marinades and sauces and things like that are, are a, definitely a saboteur. So, 
if you could just kind of dry something up and put it in a pulp and then put that in a little fat-free sour cream or, or a Greek yogurt, what an awesome idea for what, a dip. A lot of things you can buy already dehydrated on penzies.com. You can buy uh, P-E-N-Z-E-Y-S.com. There's a lot of salt-free spice blends they have there. Um, things that people don't realize, like curry powder, chili powder, lemon pepper, that usually has salt, right? You know, if you want to get yep. a salt-free Everything version. has salt. Everything has salt but if you, you buy it. But you get a lot of cool, like, dehydrated stuff. Like, they have dehydrated bell pepper already granules on their on their site you can purchase. What I do in my house, I'll buy it like that already dehydrated. I'll put it in a pepper mill. And I'll just grind it on things as I want. But putting that into, like, sour cream, like fat-free sour cream, almost gives it more like a ranchy kind of flavor. Yes, a little yes. bit of dill in there, a little parsley, a little onion and garlic powder, and you got, like, a... It's not buttermilk ranch, but it's a nice flavor that's going to give you a little more little, little, little something yeah. else. So at the end of the day, guys, what you really need to do is just think a little bit outside the box. And, and it could still be convenient. It could be portable. But the most important thing is that it's whole and it's not processed. That's what we really talk about here at Pritikin. I think that's, that's our special sauce is that we really focus on the whole food. We don't get nitpicky about every single portion. We don't get nitpicky about... Um, the, the, you know, the, maybe the type of fruit that you're eating or the type of vegetable that you're eating. The most important thing that we want to hit home is that you want to eat foods that are whole because when they're whole, they're usually more fibrous, they're more watery, they're more filling. And so we actually are able to lose weight, lower blood pressure, decrease your blood sugars, all of the things that you come here for and actually feel satisfied and not hungry. So the one thing that I was pride myself that Pritikin does a wonderful job of is that hunger is just not on the menu. And I think that's super, super important for people that are on a weight loss journey, because a lot of times in a weight loss journey, that's what happens. People they are, restrict. People are so funny when they come to me, chef, I'm eating here all day. He's like, I, I, how, how am I losing weight? I, I've been eating all day. I'm so full. I'm like, well, right. I mean, but, look, but are they, but are but, you? And but, they're like, but, yeah. But, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. And then like five, five, yeah, and then a week is like, I lost five pounds. You know? <laughs> so, How did that happen? I, yeah. I've never done that before without being hungry. So I just, I just think that, you know, that, that whole concept of whole foods, watery, fibrous exactly. foods is a really, really big concept to hit home when you're, when you're on a weight loss journey, because um, that way you can really satisfy what you're looking for. And it actually is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. It doesn't exactly. have a beginning. It doesn't have an end. It's just, it's just your life. Exactly. Right?